press home your attack. If you individually succeed, you will have delivered the most devastating blow against the very vitals of the enemy. Let him have it right on the chin. Send that message to all groups and stations. That was how Air Marshal Harris, Commander-in-Chief Bomber Command, gave his instructions for the largest air raid the world has ever known. At aerodromes up and down the country, well over a thousand British-built bombers were being prepared for their journey over the heart of Germany's biggest industrial center, the Ruhr. While armorers and fitters were at work on the machines, the air crews were receiving final instructions from station commanders. In the opinion of the weather prophets, this is the night, and the plan is on. Now, the target is an old friend to many of you. It's the city of Cologne. The route is almost direct. I'll show it to you. It's almost direct. Base, Uchtdorf, direct to Cologne. On your target there, turn southwest, Oeskirchen. Then direct to Norland, and then direct to base. That's all. Good luck to you all. Outside, the huge bombers were being loaded with the largest cargo of high explosive and incendiary bombs ever to be carried by one striking force to a single objective. As you can see, the WAF were directly concerned in this all-important job. Tons and tons of beautiful bombs were tucked away, ready for the night's operation. At dusk, the colossal force set out. Heavy bombers of many types took off from aerodromes all over the country. Perfect staff work could have achieved the devastating success of this raid. For something like an hour and a half, bombs were dropping at the rate of about 20 tons a minute. Just work that out. Maybe the Hun is less proud now of the Luftwaffe's savage attacks on Warsaw, Rotterdam, Belgrade and elsewhere. The pall of smoke which covered the target area for days afterwards made reconnaissance photographs difficult to get. But from these pictures of previous raid results, it's easy to imagine what Cologne looks like today. We already know what the RAF have done to Rostock, Lübeck, and other places. This was before the Thousand Plan came into operation. Home again. The boys certainly seemed satisfied with their night's work, and rightly so. Oh, well, something give Cologne a good pacing this time, anyway. I looked down over the target, nothing but a sea of fire. Never seen so many aircraft in the air before in my life. I think the amount of aircraft we sent over and the amount of bombs dropped and everything else really completely fox the defenses, etc. Hello, boy. Have a good trip? Yes, fine. Uh, bang on trip, yes. With it, absolutely. Well, boy, certainly might have missed it to the line. What did you think of it, Sam? Yeah, we certainly ha hit him under the chin that time, then. Hit him under the chin, Sam, and the kick there and squared in the seat of the paint. Well, boys, you ain't been to the word cabin site. Well, I don't suppose I owe you Cologne's no, so good now. <laughs> There's only one thing that I'm afraid we shan't be doing this trip again for a very long time. And I say it was, because there doesn't seem to be very much left to pay attention there. Eh? Well, did anyone see any Jerry's? Uh, no, sir. Uh, there wasn't any room. There were too many of our own about. Excellent. No fighters. Well, has anyone else got anything of interest to say? What about the flag? Well, there's always a bit there, of, and of course, where you found it, as usual. Mm, here's a piece of it, anyway. Oh, where did you find this? Oh, just taking it out of my sleeve. <laughs> you were very lucky. Thank you. At Cologne, and again at Essen, Germany has felt the growing might of the Royal Air Force. Soon, America's strength will be added to ours. Air Marshal Harris has this to say. Cologne, Lubeck, Rostock, those are only just the beginning. Let the Nazis take good note of the western horizon. There they will see a cloud as yet no bigger than a man's hand. But behind that cloud, 
lies the whole massive power of the United States of America. When the storm bursts over Germany, they will look back to the days of Lubeck and Rostock and Cologne as a man caught in the blasts of a hurricane will look back to the gentle zephyrs of last summer. There are a lot of people who say that bombing can never win a war. Well, my answer to that is that it has never been tried yet, and we shall see. Germany, clinging ever more and more desperately to her widespread conquests and foolishly striving for more, will make a most interesting initial experiment.